What's up guys, Johnny here, welcome back. Uh, today I wanna to talk to you about racing tiny hoops using an indie board. And by indie board, I'm referring to the stock Inductrix FPV board from Blade um, or Horizon Hobby. Now if you haven't seen my last video, I'll wait here while you go check it out. Seriously, go check it out. All right, so hopefully you got a chance to take a look at that video and you saw some really interesting results. At least they were really interesting and surprising to me. And that was that racing tiny whoops, angle mode turned out to be far superior to flying in acro mode. That matched what the experts had told us, that matched what people have been telling me for over a year. Um, and I was just too hard headed to really listen and actually try it. But there's another thing that experts have been telling me for a long time that I need to do if I want to race tiny whoops, and that's use the stock Inductrix board when racing angle mode. That's what I have right here. It's a stock Inductrix. I've made a couple of small modifications. Uh, so the frame that you see here is actually the Inductrix Pro frame. I much prefer this over the stock uh, standard Inductrix frame. And then I've also added a JST PH 2.0 connector so I can run the better batteries on here. And then I've also changed out the motors. Originally, I tried to run the Newbie Drone Gold motors on this thing. Um, but when taking off, it just oscillated so bad. It was really hard to control. It was really, really a weird experience. And I think they were just a little bit too powerful. I don't have the expert recommended motors in here, which are the Tiny Whoop secret sauce motors. But what I do have is basically insane motors from Excel RC. Those have a little bit of oscillation when I first take off, but once I get going, you really don't notice the oscillations anymore. So they seem to perform pretty well. So the plan here is to take the same drone and set up on the same course that we did the angle versus acro mode testing on, but this time run it with the indie board. Now, because it is running a stock board and it is Horizon Hobby, I do have to run a Spectrum transmitter. So in order to do that, I can't use my trusty old Tyrannus that I'm used to, but instead I'm using a Spectrum DXE transmitter. This probably puts the stock board at a little bit of a disadvantage. It's not the transmitter I'm used to. The gimbals definitely don't feel quite as nice as my Tyrannus does, but in the short time flying it, it's not a big difference for me. It still you know, works, but it's definitely not ideal and it is a little bit of a disadvantage. These motors are definitely not as powerful as the gold motors I was using on the beta flight board, but with that superior angle mode flight characteristics, can this thing put down better laps than we we're seeing when we we're flying angle mode with our beta flight board? Let's go set this thing up on the track and let's go get it tested and see how she does. All right, so we just completed those tests. I wound up running the exact same test that I did when I ran through the, the beta flight board. I ran through five rounds, qualifying rounds, trying to find the fastest three consecutive laps. I have to say I'm a little bit surprised. I really expected that I would do about the same with this quad versus the beta flight board, um, but that really wasn't the case. In fact, if you look at it, my best, you know, three consecutive laps is about the same as I have with the beta flight board when flying in acro mode. And based on just how drastic of a difference it was in angle versus acro mode before, I thought I was going to be seeing something sort of similar with these results, and I did not see that. I'm going to do a just two comparisons here for you, just side by side. First, I want to take a look at the fastest three laps of this guy versus the beta flight board. Um, you can see the beta flight on the right and this one on the left, and you can just see things look a little bit faster about flying with the beta flight board. I think the big difference and the big key reason why for me is that I can't run the same motors in this quad here as I can run the beta flight board. 
Because Betaflight has a built-in GUI, has full PID control, has lots of settings to optimize, I can go through and then tune that craft to whatever tiny boot motors I'm running. This one here doesn't offer any of that. I'm basically stuck with the stock tune and therefore it limits the motors I'm allowed to use. And I think what happened is by using the superior Newbie Drone Gold motors, I was able to get a better flying quad that went faster around the course than I can get with this flight controller. There's a chance that this flight controller is better for angle mode, um, but it's really being limited by these motors. Now, one thing I am curious to check out is, like I said, all the experts would tell you, you really need to get some of those special sauce motors from Tiny Whoop if you want the best possible racing experience. Um, and that's not what I have. If I'm able to get my hands on some of those things and put this back to the same test, I'd be real curious to see if I made up that difference in time uh, by swapping these to those better motors versus using these Excel RC Insanity motors. So what I'm also gonna do is I'm also gonna show you a side-by-side -side comparison of this versus the Acro mode. Uh, quad from the other day. Now what I will say is that even though the best three consecutive laps were basically the same between this and the acro quad, I did find myself being a lot more consistent running angle mode with this one. I was very, very consistent lines. They weren't as fast as they could have been obviously flying the other one, but if I was in a race where getting laps mattered the most, this thing would have done really, really well. It was still pretty good speed around the racetrack. It was extremely easy to be consistent with. It had really good control. It just didn't have the speed that I'd have otherwise. So I feel like on a track where I really emphasize that speed, I'm gonna have a better time with the beta flight board, even though I might be at a slightly higher risk of crashing. But anyway, yeah, I thought these tests were really, really interesting. I wanted to share them with you. Obviously lots of people are looking at, hey, should I get the Tiny Whoop Racer with the Indie board? Is it that important? Or should I go with one of these um, beta flight based board, whether it's ones from beta FPV or the B core V2, um, or even the one I was using the other day, which is the B core V1. I think all those turn out to be really, really good boards. I really like the beta flight boards because you can tweak it. Combine that with having project mockingbird, which gives you kind of a guideline on how to tweak beta flight boards these days. I think that's going to be the way to go. I think that's going to open up more and more opportunities to run better and better motors in our tiny whoops. And we're going to start seeing better and better racing. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Obviously, if you do have the indie board, you know, it's still more than competent around the racetrack. But for me, at least, I was not able to keep up with the beta flight board. I found that test really interesting. That did not match what the experts had told me, but um, that's why we put these things to the test. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that test. I hope you found it helpful. And um, as always, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.